Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to talk you through how I screen print my t-shirts at home using a really DIY method. So this is how I screen print all of the t-shirts in my online store. Like this one here, because it means that I can print to order rather than having to buy a bulk lot from a supplier and dealing with storing merchandise and things like that. It means that I can just print a t-shirt whenever an order comes in. To start with you need a blank silk screen. Now because I do everything in a really DIY way, most of my frames are made by me and my dad mostly my dad if I'm honest, and I have filmed a whole video about the process of making your own frames just using some wood and some fabric, and if you're interested in that it'll be linked down below and also playing there. But if you don't want to make them yourself you can also buy them from an art supply store and there'll be links to a few suggestions down below, but making them myself is how I do it. The hardest part of screen printing is definitely getting the design onto the screen like this. The printing itself I don't find so difficult, but getting a screen like this can be tricky. It's a chemical process using something called emulsion combined with UV light, so it's about getting the timings right. I'm going to talk you through it now, but I have made a downloadable PDF that'll be linked down below that goes into instructions step by step in a little more detail so you might find that useful. You'll need a few things for this process, most importantly you'll need some emulsion and some sensitizer. I use the Diazo brand and that requires two half ounce bottles of sensitizer per jar of emulsion, but just follow the instructions on whatever emulsion and sensitizer you buy to mix them together. There will be links down below to where I buy mine. I try to mix these two together in very dim light or at least definitely not in sunlight because what happens when these two chemicals are combined is that they will harden in UV light. You'll also need some push pins, the taller the better, so don't go for the little tiny circle matte pins. Lots of newspaper to cover the surface you're working on, card with a straight edge or a squeegee like this to spread the emulsion out on the screen and you'll also need a dark place where you can leave the screens to dry overnight. I usually empty out my wardrobe for that part and put the screens in there. First you're going to put a push pin in each corner of the flat side of the frame, so not the side with the dip in it, so that it can sit propped up on those pins without any material touching the surface you're working on. Put down a lot of newspaper because this can get messy and then in very dim light spread a thin coating of emulsion onto each side of the fabric of the screen using either the straight edged piece of card or the squeegee. Make sure all of the screen is covered and try to get it as even as possible on both sides. I know it's really hard in the dim light but you will get the hang of it trust me. It's messy stuff, it's bright green or blue depending on what brand you buy, so try not to get it on your clothes or on the table. When the screen is all coated put it in your dark place to dry overnight sitting on the pins and I like to put newspaper down on the shelf before I do that as well just in case any drips form. The reason for the pins and that we set it this way down rather than this way where you could argue that it could be sitting on the wood and the fabric not touching the surface is that we want this side inside the screen to be the most flat because when you're printing the t-shirts you're going to be pouring ink along here and then using your squeegee to cover this print. So you want a nice flat surface for working on and drips do form in this DIY method as you can see with these ones here, so it's better that they're on the outside of the screen rather than on the inside of the well, as it's called. When the screens are completely dry to the touch, it's time to expose them, and this is the tricky part. You need to have your design printed out on transparency. Most print shops will do this if you just take in your file on a USB stick and ask them to print it. The design needs to be as black and dark as possible, so I sometimes will print off two copies of my design and then like match them up and stick the two pieces of transparency together just to make it super dark, but I don't think that's really necessary. What's going to happen is that you're going to place your design back to front on the flat side of the screen and then take it outside in the sun to expose it. The sun is going to hit everywhere on the emulsion that your design isn't because your design is black so the light is not going through that to the emulsion on the other side. So it's going to harden everywhere but your design. Then you'll bring your screen back inside and wash away the emulsion that was underneath where your design was. I just use a shower nozzle and like a soft scrubbing brush for this. Sometimes the emulsion can be stubborn and it can get pretty tense because you think it's just not going to wash out but then all of a sudden it just does. This is definitely the trickiest part of the process and I would suggest before you go exposing your proper designs and using your good screens you use a test screen to check how long you should expose for. That is all explained in my instruction PDF so please check that out, link down below, it'll really come in useful I promise. The test screen basically will tell you how long you should leave your design out in the sun to expose because that depends on so many different factors and you need to do a new test every time you expose a screen. It depends on the weather, what time of day it is, even where in the world you are so I can't give you an exact time to try but for me it varied between 
like 20 seconds to a minute. Please don't feel bad if you don't get it right the first time. It is a really tricky process. I wasted so many screens getting so many wrong, but the beauty of DIY screens is that you can easily just cut the fabric out and stick more in and try again. So once my screen is all washed out and I can see my design, I like to put it out in the sun again just to make sure all the rest of the emulsion is totally completely hardened and it's safe to leave it out for as long as you want after this stage because the important part is already clear and there's no emulsion on it so you're not going to affect that in any way. Then it's time for the much less scary much more fun part actually printing the t-shirts. You don't need any fancy equipment for this either I just put some newspaper inside my t-shirt and then put the screen on top and clamp it to the desk. It can be really hard to line the screen up exactly so what I try and do is like peek underneath as I'm putting the screen down and I also like to mark on the screen where the center of the design is so that I can try and line that up with the label on the t-shirt. Then I take a bit of screen printing ink on an old spoon and spread it across the top of my design, take a squeegee and pull it down firmly and quickly back and forth to cover the design. I'll leave links down below to all of the equipment that I use and it'll also be in the PDF. When you're satisfied that the design is covered, take the clamps off and carefully lift up the screen. At this stage sometimes I have to go in and do a few touch-ups with a little paintbrush or a little silicon tip brush thing that I have. Just because my screens aren't perfect, they are DIY, so sometimes I do have to touch things up. Leave the ink to dry completely and then use an iron to set it. It'll say on your bottle of screen printing ink how long it needs to be heated for to set the ink, but usually I think it's about six to eight minutes. And then you've got a t-shirt that you've made yourself, which is really exciting. If you wanna hear more about my t-shirt design process or printing process or just the business in general, there'll be a link down below to a playlist with lots of videos about that. I'm gonna say it again, but please make sure you check out that PDF of instructions because I think they're much easier to follow along when they're written out in steps like that, so. That should come handy if you're trying this out at home and please feel free to ask any more questions that you have down below in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please share it around with anyone who you think might like to see it or be interested in it. Also if you are new to my channel I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I make new videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye!